After starting at quarterback as a freshman, Mark Fuller would only make it halfway through his sophomore year before being benched. He sat and watched from the sidelines his whole junior season, but now he was a senior and he had a strong team around him. James Madison was projected to finish in the top 25, and after a surprising playoff appearance last season, the goal was to make it back and potentially compete for a national championship. Our first four games of the season were meant to prepare us, but it was going to be the hardest four-game stretch in college football ever. So we started the season playing at Alabama, and our defense gave up a touchdown on the opening drive of the game. Mark Fuller also started his senior year playing like a blind quarterback, but it didn't matter because he tied up the game a couple minutes later. Near the end of the second quarter, the Crimson Tide went back up seven, so Mark Fuller needed to get us some points before the half. And on the next play, he found senior All-American wide receiver Leon Houghton Jr. for the 49-yard touchdown catch. It felt like our receiving core had been the same for years now, and to be fair, it had, but since they were all seniors, this was it for them. The only new starter on our offense was junior running back Travis Hall, and he tied the game up for us by using his speed to get to the outside. After our defense got a huge stop, all we needed to do to beat Alabama was get into field goal range and settle for three, and that was enough to pull off the upset at Brian Denny Stadium. We ended up barely moving up in the polls, but we were playing number five Oregon, and we would have to play perfect to pull off the upset. The Ducks defense got confused on our first drive and left senior receiver Isaiah Kegley wide open for the 30-yard touchdown, but our lead was very short-lived as by the second quarter, we were down three. Mark Fuller was threading the needle on passes like this one to senior tight end Kadarius Sharper, and he got us all the way down the field before halftime to give us a four-point lead over the Ducks. We even got an interception on one of the last plays of the half, but I pitched it trying to make a highlight play, and it almost backfired. Unfortunately, it did lead to a completely unnecessary safety, so we went into the half only up two. And Oregon had all the momentum until senior Aaron Butler read the Ducks quarterback like a book, and got this clutch goal line interception. From there, we went up five, and at the start of the fourth quarter, we scored again. Not only were we going to upset Oregon on the road, but we were going to do it easily because Mark Fuller was using his legs to make sure his senior year was going to put him on NFL teams draft boards. And the following week, we were hosting number nine Georgia at home for the first time ever. Senior wide receiver Isaiah Kegley completely toasted his man on this play to get us all the way down to the Bulldog six, and then Mark Fuller got us into the end zone right after. We were surprisingly playing really well, but our defense finally gave up a touchdown midway through the second quarter. And when Mark Fuller tried to bomb the defense and hit Lean Houghton Jr. in stride, it did not go as planned. But it was okay because he found Isaiah Kegley in the back of the end zone a couple minutes later. Even though he was originally ruled out of bounds, the ref overturned the call and gave us the touchdown. By the fourth quarter, we were easily running away with the game, and we had completely embarrassed the Bulldogs. Somehow we still weren't in the top 10, but if we beat number four Syracuse this week, we would definitely deserve to be ranked number one. And Mark Fuller got us off to a hot start with this touchdown run. At the start of the second quarter, he bombed the Syracuse defense to hit Leon Houghton Jr. for this 39-yard touchdown grab. And even though our defense was doing a really good job of holding the orange on third down, we were only up one possession. And Mark Fuller turned the ball over when he got hit throwing the ball away just seconds later, so in just minutes, we had quickly blown our whole lead away. But we ended the half going up three, and started the third quarter with a touchdown. Syracuse had no clue how to stop our passing attack, so they came out in prevent defense, and they still gave up a 28-yard touchdown to us. On this huge fourth and six, sophomore safety Dylan Davis came up clutch with interception, and this touchdown snag from senior wide receiver Sean Rivero would put the game completely out of reach for Syracuse. So we were now 4-0. But somehow, we weren't even in the top five, so we were going to need to run through Sunbelt Conference play with ease. Despite being off to a bad start, our defense was locking up the Southern Miss offense, but we had zero points at the end of the first quarter. And senior quarterback Mark Fuller continued to disappoint with terrible reads like this one. We wouldn't be the first top 10 team to struggle against a Sunbelt opponent, and our offense wasn't able to get anything going at the end of the half. It was clear we were playing like the worst team in the nation, and it didn't get any better for us in the third quarter. We weren't taking Southern Miss seriously because of our recent success, and it was going to be hard to come back. But fortunately, Lee and Houghton Jr. created a ton of separation to start the fourth quarter, and we were right back in it. However, we needed to get a big stop on 4th and 6th against the Golden Eagles, but instead, they turned it into a touchdown. And they even got the two-point conversion, but right after, tight end Kadarius Sharper got multiple big plays on the Southern Miss defense to move us down the field. And Mark Fuller and Isaiah Kegley hooked up in the end zone with plenty of time left on the clock. After a clutch defensive stop, we had less than a minute to score the game-tying touchdown, but Southern Miss got a sack on this play, leaving us with 17 seconds and no timeouts. The game was going to come down to the last play as Sean Rivero got stopped on the goal line, and then Joe Whitmore made the biggest catch of his career 
but we decided to go for the win. And Kadarius Sharper was the hero we needed to save the day, so we avoided the upset. And we went into week seven focused. Seniors Mark Fuller and Sean Rivera were both looking to have a huge game, and that's why I took Mark Fuller to go for higher than 257 passing yards and Sean Rivera to score a touchdown on underdog fantasy before the game started. It turned out to be the right decision as my Sean Rivera pick em hit midway through the first quarter, but since you need to pick a player from two different teams on an entry slip, I picked South Alabama's quarterback to go lower than 14 rushing yards, and by the end of the game, we'll know if I predicted all three right and won money. Leon Houghton Jr. made this diving touchdown snag at the end of the first quarter, and then Travis Hall ran it in to put us up 21 points. In the end, we creamed the Jaguars, and since all three of my pickums were correct, I walked away turning $20 into $120 on a college football game, and you can do the same by going to Underdog Fantasy and using code Bordeaux. They'll match your first deposit up to $100, and now it's time to see if we can remain undefeated. Our division in the Sun Belt was actually pretty tough this year, but we finished the first quarter taking a 10-point lead on Georgia Southern, and the rain wasn't giving Mark Fuller any issues as he was dotting the Eagles' defense and showing Nebraska how it's done. He finished with an insane stat line and our defense was almost perfect. As long as we won out, we'd make the playoffs, but we were playing at Old Dominion and that was never a free win. Surprisingly, they took a 14 point lead on us early in the game, but that didn't sit well with Sean Rivero. He routed up the corner on him, put him in a spin cycle, and ran for 48 yards until he was somehow tracked down by a massive linebacker. It didn't matter he couldn't break free because on the next play, Travis Hall used his speed to accelerate right past the Monarchs defense and get us within one possession. With a minute left in the half, we fell behind 17, but then senior wide receiver Isaiah Kegley showed why he was put on kick return duty for the first time this year. He took it 104 yards to the house without anybody coming even close to catching him, and then Travis Hall ran it in to start the third quarter. He completed completed the comeback on this touchdown run, and it was incredible how fast we changed the game and started dominating against the Monarchs. Our offense was going off, and we left the game 8-0. The following week, we played a winless Coastal Carolina team, and even though Lee and Houghton Jr. put us on the board on our first drive, it was a one-point game at the half. Midway through the third quarter, the triple option completely confused Coastal Carolina's defense, but unfortunately, it was still a close game in the fourth quarter. However, on third and two, this 20-yard touchdown run by Travis Hall would seal the game for us, and we remained undefeated. Appalachian State had a bad two weeks, and we were looking to go into their house and pile onto that misery. We took an early 14-point lead on the Mountaineers, when Lean Houghton Jr. toasted their defense for a 42-yard touchdown, but by the end of the half, they worked it all the way down the field and made it a five-point game. Mark Fuller jumped into the end zone here, but we didn't give Appalachian State that good D, so they were able to make it a one-possession game on this 12-yard run. However, that didn't stop Mark Fuller from coming out and delivering a beautiful dot to Chris Lewis with three minutes left in the game, but once again, our D wasn't good enough, and senior quarterback Davis Lane Jr. put the Mountaineers right back in it. On third down, Appalachian State stopped us from running out the clock, so we punted it back to them, but right when it looked like we were going to give up our lead, our defense came up clutch, and we escaped again. But there were a ton of undefeated teams so the college football playoffs were not a guarantee, and all we could do was go out and play our best. We always played to the level of our competition, and if we wanted to win a national championship, that would have to change. I was really disappointed with how the team was playing, but as long as we won, it didn't matter. Travis Hall put us up two possessions at the end of the third quarter, and in the end, it was enough to secure the win. If I'm being honest, our last regular season game wasn't even a contest. Mark Fuller somehow became the school's leading passer, and he was having an amazing day. Nobody on Georgia State could stop him, and he deserved to be pulled from the game before halftime. We absolutely railed Georgia State, but a spot in the college football playoffs still was not guaranteed for us, so we would have to go out and win the Sunbelt Conference Championship against Arkansas State. And Mark Fuller ended the first quarter by finding Joe Whitmore with a 24-yard touchdown pass. I was so proud of how well we were playing, and despite Arkansas State's late attempt to fight back, we became Sunbelt Conference champions for the third season in a row. So we obviously made the college football playoffs. Texas A&M's Eli Stowers won the Heisman, junior right end Derek Williams won the Lombardi, and senior linebacker Aaron Butler won the Bednarik and the Buckkiss. Mark Fuller threw for over 4,000 passing yards, Travis Hall rushed for 14 touchdowns, and Leon Houghton Jr. had another incredible season. In the first playoff game, Arizona State upset Kansas State, and in our matchup, we were taking on undefeated Western Kentucky. They were the first team on the Board, but their lead only lasted minutes as we immediately responded right back. At the beginning of the second quarter, we increased our lead to 11, and the Hilltoppers couldn't figure out how to stop our upbeat offense. Midway through the third quarter, Western Kentucky got right back into the game, but then Mark Fuller took over. He scrambled to the outside and let a dot fly into the back of the end zone, which was enough to secure us.
us the win. So we were headed to the national championship game, and it all came down to this. Travis Hall was able to find the open hole and get us into the end zone on our first drive, and Joe Whitmore created five feet of separation to get himself a memorable catch. We were able to end the first half the Ooh. best way possible as Travis Hall ran it in. And this game was honestly never even close. Even without Mark Fuller in the fourth quarter, we were able to comfortably run out the clock and win the game because Travis Hall was playing out of his mind. So we had finally done it. James Madison was your 2027 national champions 